time to travel an hour northeast through the heart of Devon back to Powderham. I'm taking a closer look at the history of the Courtney family who have lived here for the past 600 years or so. And you can be sure that there's one or two skeletons in the cupboard. The Courtneys built Powderham Castle in the 14th century, arriving from France in 1152. The family consolidated power through well-fought battles with local rivals and prudent marriages. Here in the dining room you can see coats of arms representing both sides of the family on opposite walls. We have the English on one side and the French on the other. But it's the portraits that grab my attention. They tell us a great deal about the family, the success in this part of the world, the finery of their clothing, the sumptuous settings and the sheer scale of the work. It gives us a lot of information but it tells us of the confidence and of the status of the Courtenays by the mid 18th century. During the 18th century, there was a predominance of female family members. The men were few and far between. And when an estate is passed through the male line, like this one, there is bound to be repercussions, and indeed, there were. One story the family were keen to talk about involved the boy in this picture, William. As an adult, he had 14 children, but only one son. He was also christened William. But with 13 sisters to tease and pamper him, William was also affectionately known as Kitty. In 1788, at the age of 21, William inherited the castle and tremendous wealth. And to mark the occasion, he threw a massive birthday party, inviting 600 guests. And the celebrations took place outside here in three wonderful, luxurious marquees. And when the guests were leaving the festivities, they were all presented with one of these, a peach, an incredibly rare fruit back then. It doesn't seem like much, does it? But that would have been worth two pounds. Yeah, two pounds in 1788. Today, that equates to 270 quid. That is a massive show of extravagance. But nowhere sums up William's tastes more than this, the music room, his birthday present to himself and Powderham. It's grand, colourful and ostentatious. Now, why does all this talk of William Courtney, the third Viscount here at Powderham Castle matter? Well, because the sensational events of one night in 1782 changed the course of William's life and his family's history. The current heir to the estate, Charlie Courtney, has agreed to talk to me about it here in William's favourite room. Tell me a little bit about the scandal. Something went on. William had a very tragic story. He grew up blissfully happy in this house. But when he was a teenager, he was at school at the time at Westminster School, and on a school holiday he came back to Powderham, and staying at Powderham at the time uh, was a friend of the family, a distant cousin by the name of William Beckford. William the Beckford was in his 20s, was a very wealthy young man. His father was the mayor of London. And William Beckford and William Courtney had a very strong a friendship that became a romance, and their romance effectively got scandalised. They got discovered in, in a compromised position uh, by another gentleman who was staying at the house, and he published basically news of this gay romance, mm -hmm. and that broke the papers and caused a scandal for both Beckford and for William Courtney. Gosh, what happened to William Courtney at that stage? He continued to live at Powderham, but increasingly his life became a reclusive life. And in about 15 or 20 years after that time, charges were filed against him for gross indecency and he fled. And he, the last 30 years of his life, he lived in exile, first in New York and then latterly in Paris. Was he <coughs> running Powderham? Did he have anything to do with it while he was in exile? So, so what was fascinating uh, is um, when he died in, in 1835, his cousin, another William, inherited and uh, proceeded effectively to wipe William Courtney's story uh, out of the family records, destroyed all his records and he was very much considered the black sheep of the family and a reprobate and, and mm -hmm. homosexual. And then about 10 or 15 years ago, in a uh, coal chute in South London, a lady was clearing out the coal chute in, in Hampton Wick and she discovered this bound volume of papers and they are William Courtney's correspondence with his agent in London, basically managing the whole estate. Gosh. And the lady who found them donated the Wilkinson papers to the Courtney Society, and they're the, the property of the Courtney Society now. But they are a wonderful collection of letters, basically explaining how this man, you know, 200 years ago, 
who had grown up at this house, was passionately managing it from afar, always hoping someday to return. And he never returned. And he never returned. Oh, that's sad, isn't um, it? It's very sad. In the last years of his life, his cousin, who was an expert historian and a lawyer, basically rediscovered that William was the rightful heir to the Earldom of Devon. So he petitions the House of Lords in 1831 and gets William Courtney recreated, the ninth Earl of Devon, which is where my, my father's title descends from. And very much when he died, his body was brought back and he was buried here. And there was a great outpouring of, of, of grief and, mm. and sadness mm. for the loss of this landlord who had been unable for half his life to, uh, to live on, on the estate and to live in the place he loved. So Charlie would not be in the position he is in now if things had been different. The family line changed forever because of what happened to William. But Charlie's keen to write him back into the history books. One project Charlie has in mind is this tower, which goes back to William's childhood. William, when he was a boy, would have known this. His dad built it just about, I think, when William was born. And it would have been built to entertain guests to the house, and it would have been built to entertain all the suitors for his daughters when they came to marry him. So it was very much built as an entertaining house. Yeah. What's its plans for the future? Are you going to get a roof on there? Well, it would be great to get a roof on there, begin to use it a bit more, and being able to have visitors come and see means that we generate some revenue from it and can begin to invest back into the fabric of the building. You know, mm. restoring, telling the stories, why is this building here, what's its purpose? That'll be your kind of, you know, gift. Really, exactly. Won't it? Well, you know, step by step, it, it's very interesting. You see the last three generations my grandfather inherited just before the war yeah. and obviously had a terrible time during the war and then sold thousands and thousands of acres after it because of death duties and the really tough times and my dad gradually has recovered that and mm. pulled this out of the woods and mm. then it's my opportunity to take it on to the next step and, and leave again, your mark leave my mark and and, and uh, continue to renew and, and restore wonderful old buildings like this yeah good luck with it thank you Six hundred years is a long time for one family to live consecutively in one place. Powderham has weathered the storms and the scandals over the years, but I'm sure it's in safe hands now for many generations to come.